Hey everybody, uh, we're looking at my 20 long open top and I'm attempting to shoot some video about lighting and cyanobacteria and I keep just going all over the place. Um, there's so many things that are tied together and I got so much on my mind as far as lighting I really ought to be breaking this up into separate videos so I'm going to try again here and see how far we get before it gets too confusing. Um, having issues with cyanobacteria in this tank once again. They're not bad or anything like that. It's, this isn't really a discussion about cyanobacteria, how to treat it. I've just noticed recently that as it comes back after I do a tank cleaning, it's coming back faster and it's coming back more vigorously. And I was scratching my head as to why. And then it occurred to me it's a pretty simple answer. And that is that my uh, tubes are old. The, the T5 tubes that I have on there are 6500K. They're a nice bright white light and we'll get into that in a minute but they're old and the quality of your tubes decays over time and I always recommend replacing your bulbs at around a year if you've got LEDs that's something different we may get into that as the video progresses we may not get there uh, but we can talk at length about LEDs uh, at some other time if I don't get to it in this video as far as fluorescent tubes go your the quality of your light will degrade if you're starting with something like a 6500k and you've got a say a 10 hour on and off if your light comes on and goes off you know once a day through whatever cycle that actually degrades the quality of the light and by the time you're a year in you've lost 30 40 percent of the peak color spectrums that you want for plants um, I'm trying not to get too convoluted about growing plants and color temperatures and peak spectrum and par and all that. But plants need a lot of light in the red end of the spectrum and more significantly, more importantly, they need a lot of light at the blue end of the spectrum. Um, the light at the lower end of the spectrum is good for certain things. It helps with root growth, it helps in flowering and seed production. The blue end of the spectrum, however, is where the plant derives its energy for its vegetative growth. If you want nice, lush, green plants in your tank, you need a nice, bright, white light. You need uh, at least 5,000K or higher. So, cyanobacteria is a little different. First of all, it's not a plant, it's a bacteria. I don't know all the ins and outs of the where's and why for's, but it actually does photosynthesize. I'm assuming there's some sort of symbiosis with plant material living inside the cells or something to that effect. But it does cyan it does photosynthesize. It does not, however, need the reds and the blues the way plant does. The peak absorption levels for cyanobacteria are actually in the middle of the spectrum in the greens and the yellows. So what happens is over time this nice bright white light that has plenty of higher end blue, you know, higher energy wavelengths degrades and now I'm actually putting more and more yellows and greens and middle of the road light into the tank. So my plants aren't going to do as well, but the cyanobacteria is beginning to take off and thrive. And it's just an indication that I need to replace my tubes. Uh, a lot of people just put tubes on there and as long as it looks okay to you, which it does to me, I mean we're looking at this tank right now, you wouldn't think that that light looks like it's faded it doesn't get dimmer necessarily and that's where we go wrong we are judging the light by our perception of light plants do not see light the way you and I do at all so there is you can't tell by looking at it now eventually you'd be able to tell by looking at it and maybe if you put a brand new tube right next to an older tube and you looked at them side by side you'd be able to tell but over the course of a year, it's very difficult to notice any change in actual color appearance. The plants, however, notice. The, the, the quality of the light degrades a great deal over the period of a year. By a year and a half in, you're probably actually going to be struggling if you've got a planted tank and wondering why you're having so much trouble with your plants these days. You might be adding ferts. Uh, that's a bad idea. If you're not getting enough light for the plants, giving them more food is not going to help. They can only use the amount of food uh, that they can, you know, have the energy to deal with, and they get that energy from the light. So having good quality light on there is important, but having up-to-date lighting on there is paramount. You have to have light that's producing the color spectrum that it says on the tube. There's no sense in having a tube that says 6500K if that's not really what you're getting anymore. So... 
I think that's all that's going on with this tank as far as my uh, cyanobacteria going out of control. The problem I had with this tank, and this is where I really started learning about this, is this tank actually started with some LEDs on it. And it started with some very low quality LEDs. And I mean low quality. I bought budget outdoor floodlights uh, off Amazon uh, for $9.99. They were, you know, the Chinese like didn't even have a brand name on them or anything. And you know, they said 10,000K, and I got a good enough eye. I can see yellow light versus a nice white 10,000K. So it was really hit or miss with the, with the color temperature, and I went through a lot of them before I finally had enough that I could use to light some tanks that were a nice bright white light. Yet I still had tons of issues with the green slime cyanobacteria in this tank. And my research finally led me down to a better understanding of how the LEDs work, and not all emitters are created equal. And that was what I was doing. I was using these really low budget emitters that were producing very poor quality light. Um, you can think of uh, light as, um, I don't know, a color recipe if you're mixing colors of paint together. Uh, you can use a lot of different variations to come up with the same color in the end, but it's what ingredients did you use to get there. And when you use these really low quality emitters, they're using a lot of garbage light that's in the middle of the spectrum, and a lot of yellows and greens are in there. So visually it appears 6500K or whatever, or thereabouts in the neighborhood. Uh, but if you were actually to look at it under equipment that could show you the color spectrums you were looking at and break it down into a wavelength, you'd find that not all lights are created equal. And these lower quality LEDs are actually giving you a lot more yellows and greens than you realize and that they advertise. Um, I was using really, really cheap LEDs. Uh, that have all since burned out and I've taken them off my tanks and I've used them in you know various places outdoors or in the basement steps and they've all eventually just burned out because they were just cheap little LEDs. I do have a middle of the road quality LED on my um, brackish tank and if you're familiar with my brackish tank you know that I have endless trouble with the red cyanobacteria in that tank and despite the uh, LED that I have on there being a fairly high quality, it's a Finex brand, um, that one is still listed. If I can find it, I'll, I'll attach an article uh, or, or attach a link to an article I read that actually discusses this very thing. I, it was a while ago that I read it. I'll have to see if I can find it again. But it actually listed Finex and Current and a few other brands in there that are sort of those middle of the road brands and said so these just aren't up to snuff you know you're going to have a lot of this they'll, they'll grow your plants just fine but they're also going to grow your cyanobacteria just fine because they got a lot of yellows and greens in the middle of that spectrum in there you got to go with really really top dollar high quality leds if you're going to use leds and not have to worry about this in a tank like the one we're looking at here eh, it's no big deal you know if i was using um, an LED, like a Finex LED on this, I think I'd have no more issues than using the uh, 6500K fluorescent tubes. I would just have to keep cleaning the tank and just be a little more on top maintenance. And in this case, I simply need to go out and purchase new tubes. And once I get a nice bright white light on there again, the higher spectrum, that, that blue light actually hinders growth on your um, cyanobacteria. So if I were to put something like a 10,000K on there, that would really knock down uh, the growth rate of the cyanobacteria and really kickstart my plants. So that's going to be my simple solution for the short term. I am going to be breaking this tank down here in the fairly near future. I've got some plans for this end of this uh, fish room. Uh, it's been 25 years since I've kept snakes and I still call this my snake room. <laughs> um, but I've got some plans for this end of the fish room and this tank is going to be going at some point but in the meantime I probably am going to you know drop a few dollars and go ahead and get some new tubes for the fixture I've got on here and that should make the plant stand up and be a little greener and it should knock back on the cyanobacteria so I hope all that made sense and I didn't wander around in circles too much I feel like that was actually at least a little more concise uh, than my first few attempts so leave any comments questions uh, anything else below, again, I will try to uh, find that article, so look below and make sure you read that if you're interested in learning a little more details about this kind of stuff, and hopefully I will see you real soon on the next one. Thanks for watching this one.